Good afternoon, everybody. Let me start with some statistics so that we can have a glimpse of the problem around the world. Right this moment, I am speaking here and uh, before ending of my speech, world is going to lose one species of plant or animal, which could be the source of medicine, source of food or source of many other, or source of many necessities, actually. Today, world has produced 9 billion pieces of plastic bags which is ultimately the source of all our woes in future. We are actually clogging down, blocking down all the natural ecosystem and dynamism through plastic. Not only plastic, actually across the sector there is some polluting activities which are not contained at all. Since the inception of the conference of the parties throughout the world, when world first set together in 1995, to tackle down the climate crisis through curbing the carbon content. Since then, since 1995, world has produced double carbon dioxide. Still, we are negotiating, but what we are negotiating, what we are going to achieve is really very unclear. So we have to be much more cautious. We have to be much more active. Otherwise, we cannot sustain this planet, it would be rather really very difficult. Actually, what we can do throughout the world, still now we cannot, we cannot stop the emission of carbon significantly. We are targeting that we will keep the rise of temperature well below 1.5 degree. But what we are doing, it is telling me that the temperature rise will be well beyond 3.5 degree. What would be the appearance of this planet with that temperature rise? This has been depicted through some recent events, natural events like in Australia. We have lost one billion of animals through wildfire. It could be the human being who is locked in this um, natural calamities. But through technology, through some mechanism, we are trying to offset the climate crisis, but how long we can offset? And we used up already one third of the world resources. Every day, we are extracting more than 150 billion, million tons of resources for this, from this planet. If we keep going like that, it will be finished within the next 26 years the number of individual fish will be less than the plastic materials in the ocean. So what we can do? Like I like to put across some example uh, from Bangladesh. We are living in a country which I, I personally branded it in a, in a Hollywood movie. Uh, uh, it's a documentary film, Climate Refugee, where I tried to portray my country as a global ground zero of climate change. You know, a, a, any sort of sprint, 100 meter sprint, there is a zero point from where we start the running. So, climate change, if we think that climate change is a mechanism, somehow it started from somewhere on this planet for the first time. And I try to tell that that place is Bangladesh, from where global climate change crisis has been started. But we have to brand it more strongly so that the world give uh, enough concentration on our crisis. I lived in the nature, say for example, for more than 10 years, deep into the forest, in the nature, in many other places. So I had the opportunity to spend a whole season cycle, you know, six season in a long year. I stayed in the nature. Through staying that, I found some really miraculous solution in the nature. Nature is so mighty, nature is so innovative. There is lot of mechanism which we can cherish to avoid the climate crisis in the future. While I was in Cox Bazar, I have been moving through a, a campaign uh, involving the children to plant tree to learn lot more other environmental crises that this generation would face in the future. At that time, 
we got settled in a village in Coxbazar. That is the largest uh, fishing village in Bangladesh. That is called Najiratek. There I stayed for three years, and I tried to spend every night on every single kilometer of the Coxbazar beach. So I could have a clear idea about the nature and its mechanism and I discovered that you know most of you must be visited Cox's Bazaar Sea Beach there is some vines, creepers rolling down on the sand dunes, some lotagas, some creepers, it is called Ganga Lota, somebody call it vine yard, somebody call it railroad vine but in English it is called beach morning glory. In Bengali, we call it Gongalota. It is a sand binder. Now, once upon a time, Bangladesh was having the coastal line near to Bogura. Later on, the rest of the land has been accumulated through time period, through the sediment deposited throughout the time, hundreds of years. And in that way, Bangladesh has been created as a accredited land. That is why we call it the biggest growing delta in the world. It is still growing everywhere. Every year we get actually 300 square kilometers of land, extra land. It is being added to the territorial boundary of Bangladesh. So what I noticed, this Gangalata is a very marvelous and wonderful natural engineer gifted by the nature, which can bind the sand very easily. It grows even few meters overnight, few centimeters undoubtedly. In somewhere it is it grows few meters overnight and it binds the sand. The sand is being thrown to the land from the wave, through the wave of the sea it gets dries and through the wind, wind push it gets trapped into the, uh, the Gangalota, I mean the beach morning glory this morning glory bound the sands and in this way it keeps going expanding the land in this way this bangladesh has been created so i i discovered this and i started planting some ganga tree experimentally in some places of cox's bazaar and i found the marvelous result it's so fast it can trap the sand and it can expand the land if we keep going planting this Gangalota and some other allied species in the nature, I think that the population growth and its immense pressure on our environment could be minimized through expanding the territorial boundary of Bangladesh. So I started to introduce this mechanism in the nature of Cox's Bazaar and it has been broadcasted in the media. Later on I found that government have launched a 100 years delta master plan. I strongly believe that some of my ideas has been reflected on that landmark documents. Now we do have a 100 years long plan. That plan is an immense thing. That is, that is, I would say that half of the implementation, we do have a concrete plan now. So if we keep going, planting this Gangalota, or Kolmilota that retain the bank of rivers. Our rivers are getting deteriorated. We can uh, recuperate the ecosystem through planting this Kolmilota and Gangalota. This could be the very innovative natural engineer, nature's gifted engineer who can engineer the land very rapidly and precisely and with harmony. There will be less impact because it is not artificial in the natural way. So, what should I say in this forum that big, big infrastructural development, big, big plan may not yield in a very good result. But if we can try to find some environmental engineers, nature's engineers who can repair the decay, who can expand the land, that can heal this planet we have to find out more more options like this Gangalota. I mean nature's engineers. We have to fight these nature's engineers that will save us trillions of dollar cost on the unnecessary infrastructural development 
always a retaining wall or an embankment cannot save the river. But a natural engineer like Gangalata or Kolmilata, it can save the nature. But a big massive infrastructure may not save this nature. So what we need to think, we need to think in a different way, not in a very traditional way. In this way, if negotiation going on, like the negotiation going on in, in the uh, world climate regime, we are going to get no solution. Just the words of optimism, ultimately every year, after every global negotiation, there is a rise of content of carbon dioxide. When it will start recede, we don't know. Last 30 years, climate negotiation have been going on. Every way, every year, carbon content had been increasing. So, there is actually no hope through our activities with some optimistic words, but pessimistic actions. What we need to do? We need to create a comprehensive global mass awareness so that every human being on this planet act harmoniously, act combinedly. Otherwise, really our future is very bleak. We are not going to spare the disaster. It will grab us for sure. Throughout the world, why climate change have uh, uh, started in this world? Inequal distribution of the resources. World is trying to avoid this blame. But there is visible example, you know. In the world, there is more than a billion people are uh, 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 suffering from malnourishment. 1.7 billion of people are overnourished. One less than a 1 billion people are suffering from obesity. And uh, only in United States of America, every day, 5 billion dollars are being spent on fighting the obesity and overweight. That unequal distribution of resources has been accumulated on the body of the greedy people across the world. This is the visible example of unequal distribution of we have to be amused with the wondrous uh, beauty of the nature. We have to create the emotional attachment with the nature. We have to reconnect ourselves with the nature. Everybody, almost everybody of us has been disconnected with the nature and it is causing the main trouble because I got disconnected. I do not understand what nature is telling. I do not sense what nature is uh, sending to me to be received through, through connecting with the nature, through reconnecting with the nature, we will have the opportunity to learn the nature more, to get in closer contact with the nature. Nature will speak to us what to do and this is the only way through which we can save this planet. Otherwise, future is actually very bleak. Another last thing I want to put across that I tried in my university life when I realized that I, as an individual environmental activist, I cannot change anything. But if I can replicate my idea through many people, so various and diversity of micro actions all together can create a comprehensive action. That is why I try to uh, train more than uh, 3000 students across the 30, yeah, 57 academic discipline. Why, why I did it? Because I thought that somebody will go to the police, somebody will go to the administration, but while they will be serving on their desk, they will be more sympathized on the environment they will entertain the environmental problem very rapidly. So it is working. 20 years back, I tried to train all those people and all those people are now acting. But this has to be more comprehensive. Actually, throughout the world, we have to create a generation of local leadership at the very grassroots level so that every action doesn't come through a top-down approach. Action has to be bottom-up, through bottom-up approach. And we have, I am less interested in building any institution. I, I mean, 
I am less interested in vertical development. Rather, we should go for the horizontal development, spreading the idea as far as beyond as possible so that people across the planet get the idea what to do. Last of all, I want to say to the whole world that we got enough statistics and data on every square inches of this planet through the satellite. So we can develop a very comprehensive apps, planetary apps, where from my location if I put, uh, operate that apps, I can get the instant suggestion considering the ambient environment, what exactly I should do in my this location, say for example in within this campus. What can, but what should I do for the environment? I can decide it through operating that apps. So such type of apps should be developed so that throughout the planet, through every corners of the world, every person so that can get a clear idea what exactly can be done by him or her. This is the only way to involve the people to get a combined action a com comprehensive, comprehensive action and the action on a planetary scale. Otherwise, unless if we cannot uh, act promptly, combinedly on a planetary scale, we are going to face a dire consequences. Inshallah, human being is always hopeful. I am also hopeful that we will create a uh, way out to save this planet and save ourselves. Thank you all.